All right, we're gonna guess how long it takes to build something like this. And the answer is right in this line. So today's journey brings me down just outside of Orlando, Florida to a company called ECD, stands for East Coast Defender. They've developed quite the reputation over the last decade, restoring and building up Land Rover Defenders and now Jaguar E-Types. They'll take cars in any condition and essentially build you the Land Rover or Jaguar of your dreams. Now let's pop in and find out how. When you first arrive, you show up in their showroom here. Before you start designing a car, you get to get some inspiration by seeing other builds and other chassis that they have available. So let's take a quick look at some of these and see if I can get some design inspiration for what I like. So you get to walk around, take a peek under the hood, and you'll see some of the different engine options they have. They've got the LS3, they've got the LT1, They've got the LT4, they have an electric option, and then a diesel option. So you have five different powertrain options to pick from, and whichever one floats your boat. Some people want to just say save the planet, they'd just be cool. They go electric. I think it's about 15% of the builds end up electric. Not what I would go with. I personally would go with the LT1. The LT1 is the most modern, naturally aspirated engine. It's not a race car. It's gonna go zero to 100 miles an hour most of the time. So you're not gonna need anything that's got so much power that it accelerates you from 100 to 150 or, or beyond. I think the LT1 is the perfect choice. And this is the build you'd be looking at from me. I love the roof racks on them, uh, obviously. Adds a huge element of cool factor. The interiors, you've got so many different options and we're gonna walk through the assembly line and the plant and you can see exactly what they do but you can choose any one of the interior options wood steering wheel leather steering wheel manual automatic i mean everything is yours you are starting at the bare frame so everything is customizable that you're going to be putting into this truck and you're going to make it exactly what you want you see a lot of commonality between the builds but they're all incredibly unique this is a bespoke coach building option and I think it's very cool. It's very cool to have a, a resto mod uh, Land Rover and my son is gonna be very annoyed that I didn't come down here and buy one. All right, now that we have some ideas of what's available, I'm gonna sit down and design my own vehicle and see what spec I would personally build and see just about how much it costs before we head into the assembly line and the warehouse and see just how these things are made. Sitting down and building the vehicle is the first part of your process. And with so many different options, it's great that they have software that allows you to visualize every change you're making in real time to really dial it in and make it exactly what you want without ordering something that you're gonna ultimately regret or wanna change later. And in case you're curious, my build came out to about $300,000. And that is, I would say $25,000 higher than it should be because ultimately I would go with the LT1 engine versus the LT4 engine which I originally spec'd before driving them. And now that we've designed my vehicle, it's time to go out and check out the shop. All right, now we're gonna go inside and we're gonna see just how we turn something that looks like this into something that looks like this. So here they start by stripping it down to the frame. The frame gets sent out and refurbished and then you have your starting point to build the vehicle. Here you can see a stack of renovated frames and they came back from the shop. They get trailered out and come back. And obviously, this is a much better starting point than what we were looking at. Over here you can see the hubs and the bearings. They end up rebuilding the axles. They feel there's so much R&D behind the Land Rover axles that there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. So they just rebuild them and repowder coat them. Then we entered the main production portion of the warehouse and it's broken up into three distinct lines. The line on the left has five stations, which are four days a piece for the Land Rover Defender platform. The center line that runs parallel to that is for Jaguar E-type rebuilds and special projects. And then the right side, has a bunch of lifts that allows them to do quality control, service, and warranty work. 
But let's continue to look at the Defender production line because that's the backbone of their business. So here's where everything starts. Uh, this is going to be four days per station. And after five stations, you're gonna have a finished product. This keeps everybody on target. This allows them to have the put through that they want and produce the vehicles in a timely manner. Part of doing that is they have all the parts on site to build these, so you're not ever waiting on any parts delays. So here you go from the frame. Next thing you know, you got the shock, suspension, brakes, axles put in. Right here. This is gonna be your second four days. Ignore the wheels, those are just rollers. But you can see how you have the Brembo brakes, all modern components. And everything is set then waiting for a drive line. Everything just moved over today so you can see what phase it is at each time. Here you have engine drive line. Looks like it's got the uh, LS3 in it. And next to the three lines in the warehouse, they have four feeder rooms, which put together sub-assemblies and other things that would otherwise not be put together on the lines, so that when they get to each station, the parts and sub-assemblies are ready to just be assembled by the mechanics. Every wiring harness is custom built, specific to each car and each car's specific needs. And here, you have the leather shop. This is all the interior pieces get put together with the specific leather, specific choices, seats, molds, everything that they need. And you keep walking your way down here. The body panel starting to be put on. And you'll notice that the body panels are already painted before going on the vehicle. That's another one of their sub assembly rooms is the paint shop, which is right next door. And they paint everything and make sure it's all perfect before getting assembled on the line. This saves a bunch of time. Switch over. Interior installation. The interior installation is obviously the last part of the process, which is what you're witnessing here. They put the carpeting, the seats, and the trim panels all in the car, and this is really the final step into the assembly process. And then finally, when it leaves here, it goes right here in front of the boss's office. And this is where they start doing quality control checks to make sure everything is looking the way they want it to. And if there's anything that was um, rushed to completion or something that had to be touched up, it's here for four days for these guys to hit their checklists and come back and finish it up. After those four days are up for anyone that needs to do touch-ups, they have an entire quality control department that will pick the vehicles apart to make sure they're absolutely perfect before being delivered to the customer. And now that they've seen how they were made, they gave me the opportunity to choose some vehicles and take them out for road tests. All right, now we're gonna take this thing for a little bit of a drive and go off-roading and see just how capable and fun these things are. Because the Land Rovers, this platform is so popular, uh, people flock to it and they're now commanding six-figure sums for driving this experience. And we're gonna find out if it's worth it. I mean, honestly, uh, we can sort of get in the left lane okay. if you can make a left at the right. Yep. I think they're gonna block us from getting the filter, which is annoying. Um, we can actually go straight through this light because we won't get that filter, so that's fine. Right. You won't get what? We won't catch the filter, so we can go straight through. The light? I can go over the dirt here. Oh, if you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean... You're on a Land Rover, I yeah. uh, We're clearly not the first people to attempt that. <laughs> practical. See, this guy behind me saying, like, I'm in a truck, you. yeah. <laughs> if you can snag the right lane, see, typically we'd have just come straight up there and made yeah. left, but with it being closed, we can't. So this is a much better engine combination than the other one that we were driving. Like, it just feels more normal. Yeah. I think it's, like, that 400 horsepower yeah. V8 is completely out of it. But it just downshifts better. It's like you don't need so much power like the supercharger in, in a vehicle like this. Yeah. Especially where your vehicle is going to live zero to 100 for the most part. Right. 
Like, what do you need all that extra power for? Uh, we can swing it right where that Jeep's coming out. Where the Jeep's coming out, alright. We can take a little left up on this corner, just be careful. Right here? Around the corner. We're going to oh, go off okay. the road. Okay, got it. So, yeah, if you slow down a touch, we've got like a little, there's like a drain here as well. Yep. We just have to go around. But we can shoot up in here. Got it. Yeah, so in the summer this gets like really leafy and you've got like a tunnel of all the trees, yep. which is pretty cool. But it still looks okay on, uh, on this. Yeah, no, it looks cool. And you can look over here, look for some alligators. Yeah, there's definitely Probably plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, without a doubt. Just waiting for them to move. Ah, oh, so it drives me mad. Why do people have to dump tires? I didn't. I was in um, St. Kitts uh, recently. And there were so many like dumped refrigerators all over. I'm like, you're an island and you're like ATVing up here. And you pass them, nobody decides to clean the place up. So annoying, isn't it? It's embarrassing. It's like, a, it's a, I don't know. So if you wanted to do like a little walk around, I okay. made him jump. <laughs> All right, guys, now we're out here. We're doing a little bit of off-roading, and in Florida, that's not as easy as it sounds, but we took a little turn off the main road, found a cool spot by a couple of cows, and we're checking out the car where it belongs because it looks mighty fine. It looks, I would say, much better here than in a Whole Foods parking lot. So this Defender is actually a used Defender that the client is looking to sell. That's one of the two that I took out. The first one I took out was the LT4 version of the vehicle, which was green, I didn't film it, but the supercharged engine I think was just too fast. This spec actually is very similar to how I spec'd out my vehicle though. It comes in a similar shade of blue with the roof rack, the lights, the winch in the front, the fog lights. The only thing I chose not to do was the headlight grills. This vehicle is actually equipped with the LT1 engine, which having driven both the LT1 and the LT4, I prefer for the chassis. I don't know the exact shade of blue that this is, but it's very similar to what I was picking. The only difference is I would not have the diamond plate on top of the fenders. That was in black on my build. So the interior is where the differences sort of start. I went with a manual transmission. This one is an automatic. That's sort of a, a game changer for me. I do want this vehicle in a manual. I think it's a lot more fun to have anything in a manual. And if I'm going to spend almost $300,000 building something, I'm going to make sure it's fun. I also went with a darker color two-tone interior as opposed to the tan, but honestly, looking at it, I can't say that it looks bad in this color either. Now checking out the back of the vehicle here, I elected the same drop-down side seats here, but the thing I want to point out is the wood paneling on the floor I think is a game changer. I think it looks great and I think it's a must-have option. The seats, they're able to flop down or be retracted if you have to store stuff which is good for saving the leather instead of pouring things on top of it. Surprisingly, branding-wise, they're not really heavy on the branding on the vehicles. The only thing I saw was on top of the radiator and then the branding here in the back corner. But all in all, I think this is a very solid build spec all around. So if ECD is building what you're looking for, by all means, click the link in the description, support them. It takes about a year to actually spec out and build your own vehicle. Even though the production line's about 60 days, you still have to get in line like everybody else. But I hope you enjoyed watching how they're made and appreciating the quality product that is being produced. And this is building it better than it was new, which is very important. And uh, really the future. Uh, hopefully more models, more marks, more companies end up following the same path and the same model. Thank you for watching. Rob Ferretti. I'll see you next time.